Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up, my people? In this video, I am going to touch over complex numbers for you. Before we get into that, you know we gotta go over the precise definition of mathematics. Guys, we know that the precise definition of mathematics is that technique to explain, understand, and manage reality by specific specifically by ciphering, counting, measuring, classifying, ordering, inferring, and monitoring patterns arising in the environment. Just like I, just like I told you before in class, is everything that I t teach you in Algebra 2, are you going to use it outside this classroom? No. But guess what? The process of, of the thinking aspect of what I'm teaching you, that's going to be used outside of the real world believe it or not so again you know that thought process that you need for algebra 2 that is what I'm training you I'm working on and building on in your mind so you can leave and be success, successful in the workforce so it's very important for us to understand what this means when you work in the workforce you're not going to use every piece of this definition right here you know, I mean, you are going to manage reality. That's what we all going to do. We all manage it specifically. It may be just by counting. I know for me, I got to classify you in terms of your grades. And I know I got my parents rising in the environment. As a teacher, that's what I have to do. But as a student, you do count, you measure, because you measure how much time you got left in my class each day, every time you sit in. Your second project that you guys going to be working on is going to be pertaining to this, mostly this definition. So then, math A. So that's French for saying, remember, math is... Mistakes allow thinking to happen. So, are you going to be a expert by the time I get through with you in Algebra 2? Probably not. But are you going to have a different mindset about mathematics? Oh, yeah. Remember, mathematics is all about the growth. You're not going to be good, but you're going to get better and better. Remember, as I tell you, I'm not a good enough dancer. You would think someone like me should have rhythm, but I do not. But if I get on the dance floor, I won't look too bad. I look all right, but I ain't out of a dancer. All right, moving on. All right. I know in class, we talked about integers. And remember how we use the symbol for integers in mathematics. We denote it with the letter Z. Z is the symbol for integers. So, an example of integers. 1, 2, negative 3, negative 4. Those are examples of integers. Positive and negative whole numbers that you've been dealing with. Rational numbers. We use the letter Q, and remember, a rational number is a fraction, but because you guys are in high school, you can't really say fraction anymore. You got to say rational number. So, four-fifths is a rational number. Two is a rational number because two in itself could be written as 2 over 1. As I've told you in class, they are the same thing. Every integer can be written as a rational number. So you could say that every integer is a rational number. 77 over 5 it's a rational number too. But what can never happen? Remember, we cannot have zero in the denominator 
that's a no-no because that's becomes undefined so it doesn't exist why don't you on your phone do 7 divided by 0 10 divided by 0 100 divided by 0 do that throughout your calculator and you would get an error message if you don't believe me just try it alright All right. Real numbers we did not that were R and we talked about that with the domain and range. It could be negative one, it could be four over fifth. 4 over 5 rather, it could be pi, which we know is 3.14, it could be negative 2.175681. So guys, an integer is a real number. A rational number is also a real number. A irrational number like pi is also a real number. All right. In class, I spoke to you guys about having negative numbers in the square root. In your calculator, Type in the square root of negative 36. Make sure the negative 36 is inside the square root. And you should get an error message because, as I told you guys before, you cannot have a negative number in the square root. No negatives. That can't happen. A specific reason why, remember the graph of this square root function? It's because the domain is all positive real numbers. When I put the plus sign on the side of that, I'm saying all real positive numbers because the domain is from zero to infinity. And we did talk about that. So you can't have a negative square root for that reason alone. All right. So let's rewrite this negative 36. We're going to rewrite it as 6i. All right, y'all. Let me retake you back to algebra 1. You got a quadratic like this. Now, if you don't remember this, pretty please don't feel bad. Please do not feel bad. Do not, do not feel bad. Because not all you guys had teachers for Algebra 1. So again, don't feel bad for this. I'm going to help you remember if you forget or have never been taught this. All right. I know in class I talked to you guys about this is A, B, C. All right? I did talk to you about that. So my A term in this is 1. B is negative 2. And C is positive 2. So question is, those two numbers when you multiply together gives you positive 2 but the same two numbers give you negative 2 
You could say two times one gives you two, but two plus one does not give you negative two. And you're going to realize you keep playing. You ain't going to never get two numbers multiplied together gives you negative two. And the same two factors, as we call them, add up to give you negative two. So you got to erase this stuff. So, in Algebra 1, you realize that this is not factorable. You can't factor this out. So, you end up using the quadratic formula. Now, for this lesson, for this lesson, I am more interested about what's in the square root. I'm not worried about this B right here or this 2A. That does not matter to me at this moment. So, let's do this. We know that, let's work on the inside. B squared minus 4AC. And we know this is called a discriminant. But we talk about that when we get to the lesson. So let's just work inside the parent the square root. So, my b is negative 2. So, negative 2 square, we realize it's going to be a positive 4. Minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c is 2. So, 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. So, that's 4 minus 8, which we realize is negative 4. And we know for a fact we can have a negative number because we do that. It's not real. It's going to be to know with an I being imaginary. So that negative sign becomes an I. Now, I know in some classes we denoted that negative 1 as i, but we come across a few issues, but we're going to talk about that later. All right, so let me show you the work how I typed up this. So again, I'm worried about what's inside here. In that square root. And I get negative 4. As we know. Negative 4. Can't happen. So. There has to be. A way to rewrite that. So. We could rewrite this negative 4. As. Negative. I mean 4. Times. Negative 1. And we know that negative 1 has to be written as i. Anything negative is i. And we know the square root of 4 is 2i. Alright? That's what we know. But there's a few things that we have to straighten out throughout this lesson. And we're going to get through it. All right. All right, guys. Remember the complex number can be written in the form of a plus b i. A is the real part. B is the imaginary. So that's why they call it complex because it's two parts. One is a real number, which we already went over real numbers, and one is an imaginary number. All right. So take this example. Three is a 
because it's the real number. This 4i is the b out part. So the real term that's not contained in i, which in this case is 3, is called the real part of the coefficient real part and the coefficient of i is the imaginary part so therefore the real part of 3 plus 4i is 3 3 is real and the imaginary part is 4 all right all right let's go ahead and move on. In class, we worked a problem like this. And we know when we come to problems like this, which is addition, all you have to do is simply combine your terms. Because remember, all your final answer should be in the A, which is the real part, plus B, I is the imaginary part. So let's go get all our real numbers and put them together and get all our imaginary numbers to put them together. So 3 plus 2, because 3 and 2 are the real ones, plus all the imaginary stuff, 5 minus 3. So 3 plus 2 is 5, and 5 minus 3 is 2. And then because this is imaginary, you have to have an I attached to this. All right. So now we got something big to deal with. Multiplication. I squared equals negative one. I thought it'd be a positive one. Well, in class, I did tell you that I squared is positive one. I did tell you that. And the reason why I told you that, remember when we had that square root of negative four in class, we kind of rewrote it a little bit. We wrote it as square root of four times that negative one. Because we know for a fact anything that becomes negative becomes I. So because that's negative one becomes I and this is two I and that's just one I. So we know that I squared is just two I's, right? And we know each I is negative one times a negative one, which is positive. I did tell you that, but unfortunately, we can no longer go on with that thinking. So I by itself does not necessarily mean negative one. The mindset we had is correct though. So that part is correct, but I doesn't necessarily mean negative one. It just means you have a negative, but it's not negative one. And I know that's a little complex and difficult. So here's what I need for you to do for your ACT purposes. Not Mr. Howard's purposes, but ACT. For ACT purposes, you should just call that this is just negative 1. I squared is just negative 1. Just recall it. No, do not no longer think that I squared is positive 1 because you know that two negatives becomes a positive. You can no longer think like that no more for that. I by itself just means that a number in the square root is negative. It's not saying negative one, it's just saying that number is like negative two in this case. That's just two I.
the I is the negative sign. I know, again, that is just so complex. Oh, my God. But listen to me for a second. Your work that you have did, everything that we have did before was very logical. But these are one of those mathematical things that you just have to just recall and recall and remember. So just remember it, that I to the power of two is negative one. All right. So I have to the power of four becomes positive one. I to the power of six is negative one. So it just alternates two, four, six, eight, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Don't go no further with this, all right? For ACT purposes, remember, I to the power of two is negative one. I promise you, you just commit to memory on that. It's going to make a whole lot of sense for you. And you do well. All right. Let's apply that I squared is negative one, not positive, and just apply it here. So we know how to do problems like this. Your formula method, two times three, two times four I, negative seven times three, negative seven times four I. And when you do all of that, this is what you get. Because I went two times three, the first part, and then I went Okay, we got these backwards, but I could fix this. So two times three. That's just six. All right, then we went two times four I. Which we know is eight I. And then we know that seven I times three. It's negative 21i, and we know that negative 7i times 4i is going to be minus 28i squared. So we could clean this up a little bit if we need to. Remember, Let's combine our terms. So we know that I squared is negative 1. So negative 28 times a negative 1, that makes this a positive 28. 6 plus 8i minus 21i. I'm not finished with this. So I'm going to erase this. Again, don't forget to pause the video if you need help with anything. So this is what we did right there. This is exactly what I did. This was the first part. This is my last piece. If I somehow, some way, when I type this up, I put these in the backwards place. But again, the order doesn't really matter here. Because we still get the same thing. So let's finish this up. So two negatives here become positive 28. So 6 plus 28 is what? 34. negative 21 plus 8 that's just negative 13 
And that's how I get my final answer. So again, I know I put the foreign stuff in different places, but let's not forget. You guys got to put it in order. So do first, two times three, six. Your outer, two times four is your eight eye. So first, and then your inner, seven I times three I, or negative seven, that's this guy. And then here, negative seven times negative four, that's your last. So the four is just so the O and the I part just got switched backwards. But it really doesn't matter. All right. So guys, we talked about complex conjugates before. Remember this guy right here? So x squared minus 9 have two factors of x plus 3 and x minus 3. And this is the difference of squares we talked about. So this is the factor. But this right here is the conjugate because it's the opposite. And let me explain the details of that. All right, they said the complex conjugate of a complex number is obtained by changing the side for the imaginary part, and that's the middle part. So if z a plus b i is a complex conjugate, of z a then is defined by a minus b i. So this s squared minus nine. I'll talk to you a little bit later about conjugates in this case, but the definition of conjugate here is called the conjugate factor. So this is x plus 3 right here. The conjugate of that is x minus 3. So let's do a few examples. And this is me dealing with the difference of squares so you guys can understand it. And plus we did it. So x squared minus 25. So we have a factor of x minus 5. Its conjugate is x plus 5. The middle terms of this change. And it's the same thing for complex number. Let's do one more for fun. x squared minus 81. So if I have x plus 3, I mean x plus 9, its conjugate is what? x minus 9. And that's pretty much just it. And so for the complex, no longer dealing with perfect squares, like 5 plus 3i, its conjugate is going to be 5 minus i. That's its conjugate. All right? And it's just like I tell you, a plus bi has a, compact, a complex conjugate of a minus bi. All right. So look, we have a division problem. 3 plus 1i. So, to make this happen, remember, you got to do something with the denominators like always. So, you got to take that complex conjugate, 1 plus i, becomes 1 minus i, because the imaginary part ch sign changes. And what you do to one part of the of the rational number you got to do to the other part. 
of the rational number. So in this case, it's 1 minus i. So I feel like I need to do my following part of this. So let's do it right quick. So that's 3 minus 3i in the denominator. Here, 1 plus 1 is 1. Only 1 times 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1i. And then negative i plus 1. If how many times 1 is just 1i, positive i times negative i is negative i squared. Remember, i squared. I know we want to think positive because we think two negatives is positive. In this case, it's not. It's just going to be a negative one. So, my final answer should, and we're going to see why that is in a second. The po negative and positive one are cancel. And this becomes negative one. So one. Minus a negative one. Three minus three I. These two negatives become a positive, so it's one plus one over three minus three I. And we get 2. And that's our final answer. That's how we get to it. Just like that. Alright. You got any questions for me? Oh. You do have one. Because I, I didn't distribute my 3. Here. And that's how I got through our uh, numerator of the rational number. All right, y'all. That's pretty much just it.